Hey guys, welcome back. Today we will be looking at various methods of reproduction in paramecium. The most common method is the asexual method of binary fission. I've already done a video on this, you can check it out. But just to recap things a little bit, the specific type of binary fission that takes place within a paramecium is the transverse binary fission, in which the organism's body splits into two halves across its transverse axis. Now we know that a paramecium shows nuclear dimorphism. That is, it has two different types of nuclei. The bigger one is the macronucleus and the smaller one is the micronucleus. During binary fission, the macronucleus divides by amitosis. In amitosis, there is no spindle fiber formation. Whereas the micronucleus divides by mitosis and so there is a spindle fiber formation. At the end of binary fission, we get two daughter paramecia which are identical to the parent organism. Now, continuous binary fission can lead to a reduction in the vigor of the organism. And so as to re-attain its lost vigor and rejuvenate itself, the paramecium undergoes a process which is known as nuclear reorganization. In nuclear reorganization, the old macronucleus disintegrates and a new one is formed from the micronucleus. We know micronucleus is the reproductive nucleus. It can give rise to macronucleus when the nucleus is. This process of nuclear reorganization can take place through four methods, conjugation, endomixis, autogamy and cytogamy. We are going to look at each one of them in detail. The first method is conjugation, which is the sexual reproduction between two paramecia of opposite mating types belonging to same species. So the two individuals which are participating in the conjugation process must belong to the same species. So they must belong to say either paramecium caudatum or paramecium aurelia. However, they have to be of the opposite mating types. Each species has two mating types which differ on the basis of their chemical characteristics of cell membrane. And that is what we meant by opposite mating types. During conjugation, there is a temporary union of the two individuals in order to exchange their genetic materials. So here are two paramecia. We can know uh, and we can see that they are of the paramecium caudatum species because we have one macronucleus and one micronucleus. These two paramecia will come in contact by their ventral surfaces and they will unite to form the conjugants. Before conjugation takes place, they are known as preconjugants and after uniting, they form the conjugants. Now, at the site of their contact, the pellicle, which is the outermost limiting layer, disintegrates so that the Cytoplasm of the two paramecia or the two conjugants fuses to form the cytoplasmic bridge. The macronucleus of both the conjugants disintegrates and its fragments are absorbed within the cytoplasm. The micronucleus undergoes meiosis. We know that in meiosis, a diploid micronucleus will form four haploid nuclei. Now, out of the four haploid nuclei in each conjugant, three disintegrate. So we are left with one haploid nucleus in each conjugant. This haploid nucleus undergoes mitosis to form two nuclei which are also known as nuclei or gamete nuclei. They are unequal in size. So this is the bigger one called the stationary or the female pronucleus and the smaller one which is called the migratory and the male pronucleus. Now the migratory or the male pronucleus as the name suggests is active and it can get exchanged between the two conjugants across the cytoplasmic bridge. Once this exchange has taken place, we now have a condition in which each conjugant has two haploid nuclei. One is its own, whereas the other one has been exchanged from the other conjugant. Now, these exchanged male pronuclei will fuse with the female pronuclei to form the zygote nuclei, which are diploid, and this restores the diploid condition within the paramecium. After this process of exchange and fusion has taken place, the two conjugants will separate to form X conjugants. So each X conjugant has a diploid zygote nucleus. These zygote nuclei will undergo three successive divisions, three successive mitotic divisions to produce eight nuclei. Out of these eight nuclei, four become the macronuclei, remaining four become the micronuclei. Out of the three, uh, out of the four micronuclei, three disintegrate so we are left with four micronuclei and one micronucleus 
this one micronucleus undergoes mitosis to form this individual and this will split to form two daughter paramecia each having two macronucleus and one micronucleus the micronucleus will divide with the division of each daughter paramecium resulting in the formation of four final daughter progeny and from the other x conjugate we will again get four uh, daughter progeny so at the end of conjugation from two parents we get eight paramecia next is the process of endomixis which is seen in a single parent organism it was reported for the first time by two scientists Woodruff and Erdman in the bimicronucleated species Paramecium aurelia in which it occurs periodically at a regular interval of about 30 days and in Paramecium it occurs at an interval of about 60 days at the end of endomixis we get four daughter progeny from a single parent this flowchart shows the process of endomixis in Paramecium aurelia Let's zoom in a little bit. So we know that Paramecium aurelia is a bimicronucleated species. That means it has two micronuclei, as we can see. The macronucleus disintegrates, so we are left with these two micronuclei. Now these two micronuclei divide by mitosis twice to form eight daughter nuclei. Out of these eight daughter nuclei, six disintegrate, so we are left with two nuclei. Now this paramecium will divide, sorry, and this paramecium divides to form two daughter paramecia, each having one nucleus. Each of these micronuclei will divide twice by mitosis to form four daughter nuclei each. Out of these four daughter nuclei, two become big and uh, get modified into the macronuclei, the other two become the micronuclei. Now each of these micronuclei will divide and the body of paramecium will divide subsequently to produce two daughter paramecia from one of them. So at the end we are going to have one, two, three, four daughter progeny from a single parent organism. Next is the process of autogamy which also involves nuclear reorganization in a single paramecium. It results in the formation of two progeny however from a single parent organism. This flowchart shows the process of autogamy in Paramecium aurelia. So let's zoom in. This is the individual which has two uh, micronuclei and one macronucleus. The macronucleus will first get disintegrated. The two diploid micronuclei will, however, here divide by meiosis to form eight haploid daughter nuclei. Out of these eight haploid daughter nuclei, seven will disintegrate. We are left with one haploid nucleus. This one haploid nucleus will divide by mitosis to form two gamete nuclei. These two gamete nuclei will enter the temporary protoplasmic cone of the paramecium. This protoplasmic cone is found near the oral groove. Once within this protoplasmic cone, they will fuse together to form the zygote nucleus, which is diploid. This zygote nucleus will divide twice to form four nuclei. Out of these four nuclei, two will become the macronuclei, remaining two will become the micronuclei. Each of the micronuclei will divide and the body of paramecium divides to produce two daughter paramecia, each having one macronucleus and two micronuclei. Lastly is the process of cytogamy which is very similar to conjugation. It was reported in paramecium codatum for the first time by Wichterman. Now, individuals which are temporarily uniting are called cytogamonts. The series and the steps of cytogamy is exactly similar to conjugation until the formation of the gamete nuclei. Once the gamete nuclei are formed, they do not get exchanged between the cytogamonts. So you can ignore this cross because the exchange really does not take place. Instead, the pronuclei or the gamete nuclei of the same a cytogamond fuse with one another to form the zygote nuclei. After this process of uh, fusion has taken place, the two separate from one another, continue to carry out the process of cytogamy just like in conjugation and result in the formation of a daughter paramecia. So this was it for the video on reproduction processes in paramecium. Thank you for watching.